Wait, wait, wait. Wait. This is serious. I'm going to show you how to edit like Smitty. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Jacques GQ, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to edit like old milk bag here. And yes, if you didn't know, that that is a milk bag. I promise. But I want to be clear from the very beginning, I cannot cover every single effect he does. We'd be here for quite some time, but I'm going to be covering what I think are some of the most common ones he uses. That way you guys can be as close to that milk bag as you want to be. So if you find any of these effects helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys create content the way that you want to make it. Now you're asking Jacques, what effects are we going to be covering here? We're going to be covering this black and white with some reverb effect. We're going to be covering this very intense oh, right effect okay, here so going on. We're also going to be covering some confetti when things happen that are very happy. And also we're going to be covering some zooms whenever we need to talk about things, maybe slowly or very fast, whatever you want to do. Oh, one more thing though, before we hop into these effects, uh, I use Epidemic Sound for all my sound effects and I use some of them in this video. So I just wanted to clarify and let you guys know where I got them. So let's quit wasting time talking about it. We're gonna pop in with the first effect, this black and white with some reverb and uh, let's go ahead and get into Premiere. All right, so I have some Modern Warfare footage here on the timeline that we're gonna be messing with. So first step, we're gonna go into effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and you're gonna look for an effect called black and white. Oh, that's a money sign. That's probably an issue here then okay there we go and under image control we have black and white go ahead and drag that on top of your uh video clip now we have that black and white effect but we're trying to get that reverb still so what do we need to add we're going to go to essential sound that's under effects then we're going to go a little bit down onto the creative tab where it has reverb go to preset and we can have auditorium church and it's basically all these types of um rooms basically that reverb would be happening in but i think the auditorium is fine so we're just going to hit reverb here also you can adjust it down on the amount here so i already have mine is set around two but if you want more reverb just drag this little bar up or drag it down if you want a little bit less but i think two is a good value it gives you that sound without being it without it being too annoying now right here we have oh, our yeah. nice black and white with That's some reverb, reverb and uh, we get to Beautiful. talk about how reverb Re is in verb white reverb all right first one out of the way now we're going into our intense effect all right, so I've got the same Call of Duty footage we just worked with, but I did add some dramatic music in the back. But our first step is to come over to the bottom left corner of your screen where you have all your project files. You're gonna right click, go to new item, and you're gonna get an adjustment layer. We're gonna go ahead and set that to 60 frames per second. And also we're gonna add one more new item. We're gonna go ahead and add a color mat. We're gonna go ahead and make it 60 just because. Uh, we're also gonna make it black. It starts off the black, so you don't really have to mess with it. Now we're going to go ahead and change this name to black mat just so we know what we're messing with here. Now we're going to drag our black mat on top of our timeline. We're also going to drag that adjustment layer. Now these are a little long, so I'm just going to select over them and uh, trim them down a bit. So for our first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to this black mat. We're going to go to effects controls in the top left corner of your screen. We're going to go under motion and then we're going to see this value of 450. That's going to be your Y value. So we're going to left click and then drag it down a little bit. So you have that bottom black bar to mess with wherever you really want to have it. Then we're going to go ahead, come back down to our timeline, hold your alt key, left click on the black mat, drag it up, and that's going to duplicate it. Now we can go back to the black mat we just created with our duplication. We're going to go back to this Y value and then we're going to drag it all the way up. So now we have a black bar at the top of our screen. Next, we're going to go to effects on the top right hand corner of your screen. You're going to look for one called Tran. Uh, if I could spell transform, that would be wonderful, by the way. But the effect is called transform under distort. You're going to go ahead and grab it, move it onto that adjustment layer you have down here. And in Spinny's videos, he's kind of got this like subtle zoom effect going on. So what we're going to do is drag our playhead to the very beginning, hit this little stopwatch next to scale. Then we're going to drag our playhead all the way to the end or roughly about to the end. And we're going to go ahead and move it into about 120. And what this will do is give us like this slight zoom the entire time. So we have movement going on, but not a lot of movement. And if you want, you can go ahead and move this keyframe to the very end so there's constant motion throughout the whole effect. Next, we're going to go ahead and select the Call of Duty footage. You're going to come over to the right side of your screen and look for Lumetri Color. Now we're going to be changing exposure, contrast, and highlights, but we're going to be changing them roughly about the same. So about here, which is roughly three-fourths of the way through this bar. And to me, it gives it that nice, like, it's a different effect and it's subtle, but it's really just there. You can tell it's intense. If you want, you can even turn up the uh, the tint to magenta a little bit and then turn down the temperature to, and blue a little bit. And it'll give it just a little bit more. These are really just uh, color corrections that you can play with it yourself, but I think this is pretty spot on. And now we look here, Honestly, we have something pretty intense. intense going on. So now we're done with that. We're gonna go ahead and move into our next effect, which is gonna be this nice confetti. Yeah. So on um, one side note, this effect is probably the most annoying out of all of them because there's a lot of things going on, but from here it's downhill. That's nice. 
<laughs> now we have the same Call of Duty footage here, but I've added two buildings here at the bottom, and then I've also added some uh, confetti stock footage basically on top. Got it off of YouTube, so really just type in like confetti overlaying, you'll, you'll find something worth using. Now to actually do this effect, we're gonna have to go back to our project files, go ahead and grab an adjustment layer again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and trim this down because we don't need a lot of this. We're also gonna need to duplicate this one more time down. We're gonna trim it down to about this size and then duplicate it one more time. Go ahead and grab these and try to line it up to where the middle of the smaller adjustment layers is roughly at where your uh, confetti clip starts. Now for your very bottom adjustment layer, you're going to need to go to effects in the top right hand corner, go to replicate. Go ahead and drag that onto the bottom one. And then you're also gonna be looking for an effect called mirror. Now you're gonna be dragging mirror onto your bottom adjustment layer four times. Yes, number four times. Trust me, you, uh, you're gonna need. Then you're gonna go back up to effects in the top right. Look for one called transform. Still don't know how to spell it. Go ahead and drag transform onto your middle adjustment layer and your top adjustment layer. Now we're gonna start with this bottom adjustment layer. So once we have it selected on our timeline, go to effects controls in the top left hand corner of your screen. We're gonna to go to replicate, change that value from two to three. Now we're gonna move down a little bit more and we have all of our different mirrors. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and minimize the mirrors we're not messing with and make this a little bit cleaner and easier to mess with. Now under our first mirror, we're gonna change our Y value to 720. Then we're also gonna change our reflection angle to 90 degrees. We're done with our first mirror. We're gonna to go to our second one now. We're gonna be changing our Y value to 360. Then we're gonna be changing our reflection angle to negative 90. Now I'll minimize that and go down to our third mirror. We're gonna be changing our X value to 640 and then our reflection angle to 180. Now, lastly, we're gonna be changing our X value to 1278. Now, essentially what this does is uh, we take that video in the middle screen, we've replicated it to where it's a nine video square, and then we've kind of just like mirrored everything around it. But what it'll do is like clean up the edges and trust me, it helps a lot. So now we're done with that bottom adjustment layer. We're gonna go to our middle one. We're gonna go to effects controls in the top left. We're gonna scroll down a bit. And this whole time we're gonna be editing scale. So let's go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to scale and we're gonna change our first value to 300. We're gonna move our playhead all the way to the end. We're gonna hit our add keyframe. That's gonna add one more 300 keyframe right there. Now we're gonna grab our playhead on our timeline and move it to where your confetti clip starts. Then we're gonna go to scale and we're gonna change this value to 250 and then go use your arrow keys to go over one frame and we're gonna change this value to 400. Now also what you're gonna have to do is select all these keyframes. Then we're gonna right click, go to Bezier. That's gonna help us out a lot. Then hit the little arrow next to scale and go down here. Now what you're gonna have to do is select this first keyframe, grab this little line and drag it as far right as possible, trying to keep it kind of like uh, straight where it's nothing, no, no curves going on with it. Then you're gonna grab this line and move it pretty short here, roughly about this length. Try to have it pretty straight too. Next, we're gonna go to the right, do the same thing, kind of shorten this, uh, shorten this keyframe out a bit. Try to drag as close as possible. Now we're gonna have to move this keyframe in to edit it a bit. Uh, we're gonna drag it out as long as possible, move it back. And there you go, that's gonna be it for that middle uh, adjustment layer. So now we're gonna go to the top adjustment layer and effects controls, gonna scroll down a little bit more. Now we're gonna be editing position and rotation. So go ahead and hit the stopwatches next to both of those. Rotation can stay at the beginning, but we're gonna be editing position a little bit farther in. So first we're gonna mess with rotation. We're gonna be changing our first value to 0 0.5. We're gonna move our playhead forward a bit. We're gonna change it to negative 0.5. Move it over a little bit more. Change it to 0.3. Move it over again. We're gonna change it to negative 0.3. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and move it forward and change the final value to zero. Now we're gonna go up to our position keyframe. We're gonna change our first value to 965. Move it over a little bit more. We're gonna change it to to 955, move it over once again, change it to 963, move our playhead forward again, go ahead and change that to 957, move our playhead forward one last time, and then change this value to 960. Now for all these keyframes, we're gonna have to select every single one, right click on it, go to temporal interpolation and bezier. Also, I forgot you have to add one more keyframe, go to your very first position keyframe, use your arrow key on your keyboard to go left one frame, and then change this value back to 960. Now what we're gonna do is kind of rearrange these uh, keyframes essentially to where they're kind of bunched up together but as they extend out more there's more distance in between them now essentially what you want to have going on is the distance between your first two keyframes here you're going to want to double that for your second double that again and then double that one more time so drag that a little bit more then we're going to replicate that with these uh, rotation keyframes and it's gonna be basically it. This is roughly what your final product should look like. It's not exact, but trust me, if you get close, it's gonna look fine. All right, now here you go. Here's your nice confetti explosion, a little bit of shake going on and something really nice to look at. All right, now lastly, we're gonna have the zoom thing going on where either you're jumping in really quickly or you're slowly moving in, but all of it's to do with scale. So 
Let's get into it. All right, once again, we have our nice Call of Duty footage. We're gonna go to Project Files down in the bottom left. We're gonna grab an adjustment layer, move it on top of our clip, trim it down because we don't really need all of that. Now we're gonna go to Effects Controls in the top right. We're gonna be looking for our friend Transform. And, oh, I spelled it right the first time. Nice, all right. Drag that onto your adjustment layer. We're gonna go to effects in the top right. Now there are a lot of different motions going on, but everything here is to do with scale. So I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. Not really like a hard set line of what you need to be doing, but once you guys understand it, you can do it in whatever way you want. So the first one we're gonna be covering is when basically you have like it zooming in very quickly. All you have to do here is go ahead and hit the uh, stopwatch next to scale. Basically what you do is you use your arrowheads on your keyboard, move one frame over and then move on however much you want. Uh, let's go ahead and say we're gonna move in 200 here. And uh, basically, whenever you watch it through, it's gonna zoom in very quickly, and that's all you really need to have going on. Now, let's say you don't want it to zoom in very quickly, right? Well, let's say you just want it to zoom in slowly, and all you have to do is take the two keyframes we just made, and then just spread them out. We have our 100 at the beginning, and then it slowly zooms in. Now, let's say you wanna have it zoom in multiple times, right? Let's go ahead and move this 200 close to this 100 again. Uh, let's say we're gonna have it go forward a little bit more. We're gonna have a 200 here. Then once again, we're gonna use our keyboard and move one frame forward. Uh, let's go ahead and change it to 250 this time. And that's all you have to do. So now at the very beginning, we jump in really quickly. We wait for a minute, then we jump in again. So do that as many times as you want, replicate it, whatever. That's all you gotta do. All right, and then here you go. Here's the zoom effects we've got going on. And that's everything I've got to say about old milk bag here. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys create content the way that you wanna make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if there's another effect or somebody else you wanna cover in a future video. And until next time, peace. I'm, I'm on the same boat as you. I don't know. I just feel like playing defense. I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> He's cheating! <laughs>